24. From the following data, determine the rate law, the rate constant, and the order with respect to A for the reaction A yields to C. Okay. So, we have a lovely chart here. And when they're giving you a chart filled with maybe three trials, right? Maybe three trials, sometimes four trials, uh, or experiments, right? And they're asking you to find the rate law. This is a very uh, standardized type of question that you might see with your tests and quizzes. If they do give you a chart like this, where they give you the concentrations and the rate, and they're asking you to find the rate law, they're secretly asking you to find uh, actually something else. And what they're secretly asking you is to find the orders. Well, now, what does it mean to find the orders? Well, if we look at the general rate law formula, which is this right here, right? It's always going to be rate equals K, and K is the rate constant. So rate equals K times the concentration of those reactants raised to their orders. So essentially, all we're trying to find here is the exponents. Because once we find those exponents, uh, then we can find the rate law. So now, we only have one reactant, right? We have one reactant, which is A, and that's why they gave us the concentrations for A. Notice how the rate law only includes the reactants. So as far as the products go, nobody cares. Don't even worry about them. So, let's see. Well, how am I going to find these orders? Well, we have to kind of set up a ratio. We have to find a, we have to set up a change from one trial to the next. Now, let's just call these um, trial numbers. So let's say that this the first one is trial one, the second one is trial two, and the third one is trial three. You could call them experiments, so experiment one, experiment two, experiment three. doesn't really matter. But we have to make a relationship between one trial to another. Because then, if we know what's going on with the change in the concentration, we could find out the change in respect to the rate. So, in order to make this the easiest way possible, what I've seen is that we always like to work with numbers that are greater than 1 and not fractions. So, in order to do that for this, what I like to say is always try to work with a higher rate value and divide it by the lower rate value. It will make it easier for you with the numbers at the end of the day. Now, it does not matter which one you choose, just got to be higher over lower. So, as I see here, right, 1.52 times 10 to the negative 6 is a greater number than 10 times, uh, you know, times 10 to the negative 7th. So I can do trial 2 over trial 1. I can do trial 3 over trial 2. I could do trial 3 over trial 1. Um, if you want, I'll do one and you do another different relationship. You just got to be higher over lower. And let's see if we get the same answer at the end of the day. Maybe what I'll do, I don't know. Maybe I'll do trial 2 divided by trial 1. So if you want, you can do 3 over 2 or 3 over 1. So I'll say trial 2 divided by trial 1. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug in as much as we can for this general rate law. So for trial 2, what was the rate? Well, the rate value was the 1.52 times 10 to the negative sixth, and this equals the rate constant. Now, they didn't give us a rate constant. All we have is the rate and the concentration, right? So we don't know what the rate constant is, and we're going to have to find that after we do the rate law. So for now, I'm just going to say that this is K. And the K is always times by that concentration. So for trial number 2, the concentration is 2.66 times 10 to the negative second. And now that's going to be raised to a certain order. Remember, that's what we're trying to solve for. So that's the variable, x. You could call it x, you could call it a, b, c, whatever. Um, and then we're just going to divide it by the trial 1 values. So the rate for trial 1 was 3.80 times 10 to the negative 7th 
equals, I still don't know that rate constant, so I'm going to say K. But then I'm going to say I'm going to times it by the rate value, uh, which is 1.33 times 10 to the negative second. And that's still raised to the same order. Keep in mind that we're using the same reactant, so it's got to be the same X value. And now look here. Even though we didn't know, that's going to clash, right? Uh, even though we didn't know the rate constant, right? It's a K value divided by a K value. And what happened to those Ks? We say, see ya, bye. So it's okay that we didn't know it because it got canceled out anyway. So now all we have to do is just do the division between the two parts. So 1.52 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 3.80 second comma. That means times 10 to the negative 7th. And we get 4. Okay, cool. Now we do the same thing for this side, and we can do the same thing because they're both raised to the same exponent. So we can simplify that. 2.66 times 10 to the negative second. This looks like it's going to be 2, but, you know, we can just plug it in just to kind of show it on the screen. And there it is, 2, and that's raised to the x. So now we say to ourselves, okay, we want to solve for that order. So 2 to the what will get you 4? This is why we love doing hires over lowers, because we don't want to be dealing with fractions at this stage of the game. And this is pretty simple, right? 2 to the second will get me 4, right? I have two twos, and if I times those two twos, <laughs> if I times the two twos, I get 4. So, works out. So now from this information, I can solve for my rate law. The only number that you're going to be plugging in into the general rate law formula is the order. So we say that it's just rate equals K times the concentration of the reactant. And the reactant for this specific one was A. So I don't even have to plug in a number. This is just generalized. The only thing that's not generalized is the order. And in this case, the order was 2. So bada bing bada boom. That's it. So now this part is done. So we now know the rate law. Rate equals K times the concentration of A raised to the second. So now we move on to the next part. And the next part is we want to solve for that rate constant. So let's find the rate constant. And just like we've been saying, the rate constant is the K value. So now since we know the general formula, right, rate equals K times the concentration of A raised to the second, right? Now since we know that, we can technically use any trial and plug in our values to solve for K. Now this is kind of teacher or professor specific because some teachers might want you to find the K for every trial and take the average. I've seen teachers or professors that take the last trial, um, but I mean, generally they're so close to one another that it really should, you should get the same number regardless if you take trial one, two, or three. So let's mix and match, right? I used one and two to find the rate law, so maybe I'll use trial three to find the rate constant. So I'm going to use all my trial values uh, for three to get my K value. So for trial three, the rate was 3.42 times 10 to the negative sixth, and this equals the K value. And now we're going to times that by the concentration, and we're going to square it. The concentration of trial three was 3.99 times 10 to the negative second. So let's do that. 3.99 times 10 to the negative second. I'm going to square that value. There we go. So 3.42 times 10 to the negative sixth equals that value, 0 0.001592 times by K. When I do the math, I'm not going to uh, round. I'll take this whole value here. So let's divide on both sides by 0 0.001592, 0 0.001592, 
this will cancel. And now we are left with a k equals. So let's see, 3, 3.42 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by this answer. And there you go. And I'm just making sure that the, all these look good. Uh, I did the squaring, 3.99 times 10 to the negative second. That looks good to me. Um, and let's see. So, okay, so now we're going to round. So maybe I'll put this in scientific notation. I'll say how many sig figs? We need three sig figs. So 2.15. 2.15 times 10 to the negative third, right? Because one, two, three. But now the thing is that the k value units are very, very tricky because depending on the overall order, um, the units of k are going to change. So what we're going to do is maybe we'll find out the, the final question. They wanted to find out the order with respect to a. So the order with respect to a, this is just a fancy way for saying what is a's order? So the order with respect to a, what was the a's order? That's what we found out. There was only one reactant. So the order that it was, was the second order. So that's easy. And now from this information, we can find out um, the k value because depending on the overall order, which by the way, the overall order is the sum of all the orders. But since we only had one reactant and it was second order, the overall order is gonna be second order here. So just know that if you have an overall order of two, which is what we have here, the units for K is going to be written in a couple of different ways, but the one that I like to use is molarity to the negative one, time to the negative one. This could be written as liter over mole times the time. Um, so it, it all just depends on you know what you want, but we could stick with molarity to the negative one, time to the negative one. And you could always find out these units if, you plug in the units that they gave you into the rate law that you specifically have for your problem and just play the unit game. Me personally, I think that you can just memorize your overall orders with your units for K. Now the time that they gave us here, we got to look in that rate. The time that they gave us was hours. Sometimes it'll be seconds, maybe minutes, hours. So just make sure on that. So in this case, the K units would be molarity to the minus one and then hour to the minus one. And that is the end for this question. We answered all three questions. So we did the, the rate law, which was raise to the second. From that, we found the K value. And then the order with respect to A is just saying, what's the A's rate? Uh, what's the A's order? And that was second, because that's what we solved for. And that's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Please subscribe to the channel to help us out. Uh, we're almost at 50,000. Actually, no, just kidding. 40,000, I think. Hopefully 50,000 soon. Um, but any, any subscribers that we have, really, thank you so, 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 so much. It's because of you guys that the channel is growing and it's getting out there to all different parts of the world. It's incredible to, to know where you guys are, you know, um, you know, studying from. Um, and, and thank you so, 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 so much for all your support and for watching the video and learning. That's the main point of this channel. My brother and I really want you guys, you know, really want you guys to excel at your, your studies. So whether you're in chem, physics, or math, we have videos for those subjects at the moment with more subjects in the future. So always check back with us. We'd love to help you guys out. Thank you so much. And you guys rock. Keep studying hard. I'm rooting for you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right, bye-bye.